from London, England, it's theCUBE. Covering Discover 2016 London. Brought to you by Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Now here's your host, Dave Vellante and Paul Gillen. Welcome back to HP Discover 2016, everybody from the banks of the River Thames. We're here at London Excel, Excel London. I'm here with Paul Gillen, my co-host. This is day two of HPE Discover. Coming live, the Cube, the worldwide leader in live tech coverage. Paul, yesterday we heard a lot about uh, Composable. Uh, we had Meg Whitman on stage. What they do here is the keynotes are actually in the afternoon at two o'clock local time. And um, so they take a big two hour break in the afternoon for keynotes. Normally at these events, they inject you with the Kool-Aid first thing in the morning. Well here, they give people time to, to get up and cruise in. Very uh, European. Very <laughs> European. And, um, so, and so as a result, they go, tend to go later into the evening. So the show floor closes you know, sometime after six o'clock and then uh, the nightlife begins. Uh, last night was uh, the event. Normally it's a big storage party on the first night. Last night they combined it for the data center infrastructure group. And, uh, but you know, it's, it's a, lot of, a lot of business going on here. People are doing you know, dinners in the evenings and you know, customer dinners and the like. Uh, there's an analyst event here. Of course it's running simultaneous to AWS reInvent, uh, which has, I understand, about 130 analysts there and a lot of press. Uh, I think 30,000 people showed up for that show. It's probably yeah, I'm, 10, I'm sure there. a more uh, invigorated crowd there as well with well, the, uh, all the growth that's going on at AWS. Growth, diversity, you know, it's in Vegas. Uh, it, at one point, uh, Amazon had said they're not going to make that show bigger than 10,000 people, but it, you know, it's exploded. Um, and then, so the juxtaposed that sort of high growth business with uh, the low growth cash flow, um, $50 billion, BMF, which is uh, HPE, a lot smaller than it used to be. Yep. And I think the next Discover, uh, let's see, well the deal, well the MicroFocus deal probably won't close until August. So it's really about a year from now. We're going to see a really different HPE. Um, and, and of course, don't rule out some other big moves with the balance sheet cleaned up you know, HP could make some additional acquisitions. They certainly got the cash, and, and they've got the, uh, and it would behoove them to do something more dramatic, something to inject some more energy. Uh, one thing I took away from our, our interviews yesterday was just a very tame, button-down crowd. Uh, the, the, the people we had on, on the Cube, uh, for the most part, were, were uh, generous toward their competitors. They were courteous, gentlemanly, if you will. And uh, I really was hoping to see more energy, more, uh, more competitiveness. Uh, they had opportunities to take on Dell, to take on IBM. Wouldn't even mention their competitors by name. And that's something that uh, maybe uh, We'd like to see HP inject a little, a little bit more competitive energy into the HP experience. At least that's what I took away from yesterday. We got that a little bit from a cloud glass. I was challenging him on some of the composable yep. stuff, and and he you know he sort of laid out. And I thought he did a, a decent job of it. Laid out sort of why they're different, why the fluid pools of infrastructure being able to call on whether it's storage or compute or or networking at will uh, was different than say you know juxtaposed relative to Nutanix, which they said was sort of chunks of infrastructure that you couldn't scale independently. And, and, and that was sort of interesting. Um, but know, a it, concept that is still taking shape, uh, I sense. They haven't really defined what Composable is about in a way that, the, that they can articulate to the market. Uh, it's an interesting idea. It's certainly something that, given their, their partner ecosystem, should, should play well uh, to, uh, to customers who, who already have a, a hybrid or, or a, um, an environment with a lot of different players. But uh, you know, IBM has been working on cognitive for a couple of years now, and I think he's finally got a message kind of crystallized around that. HP is doing this with Composable, but they're still earlier on in the in the process. And the other thing we heard from Alistair Winner, who sort of challenged my assertion that HP was really a products company, he said, "No, we're actually a services company." <laughs> and uh, so I'm not sure. Do they lead with services? Do they lead with products? I still see HPE as a technology and products company first, and then services sort of wrapped around that, although he suggested that there's a new emerging set of services that are non-product related that they're leading with. And um, so that's an interesting well, sort the of The market dynamic. doesn't get excited about services. <laughs> <laughs> the market gets excited about products. And so they, uh, I can understand them wanting to lead with a, with a products orientation, because otherwise you know, you're Accenture. And uh, which is buttoned down, very profitable company, but but not one that inspires a lot of enthusiasm among their uh, their customer base. So I can see why they're doing that, but uh, clearly, service is the, the the profit engine of, of HPE right now. Yes, and 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 I agree with you. I think you know 
It's, a, it's interesting actually, again we're talking about reInvent, which is a services company, right? but they're packaging products as services, and I think they deliver their messaging largely uh, comparing themselves to products. We have this database, or we have this storage, and it's better because, and it's fast, and you know, a lot of speed and feed sort of, sort of angles, uh, but packaged as services. And, the you know, question is, will that change over time? Will it shift more toward business outcomes, which frankly are less interesting to cover, yep. um, and it's harder to compare companies on the basis of you know, business company from business outcome from company A versus business outcome from company B. But I think the difference with AWS is that they are they are uh, creating new markets. I mean, they are enabling new kind of company kinds of companies to to grow and flourish, and it's a whole new model. Uh, that yes, they're a services company, but not in any conventional uh, uh, definition of a services company. They're, they it's an entirely new new type of service, and so that generates a lot of excitement. But cloud will mature over time. They will have to to figure out. You know, how, what message, uh, how they position themselves when they are a, a big, uh, slow-growing company, which they will be at some point. Well, the other interesting thing, we keep bringing up Amazon, but we do so because it's essentially the new reference model for how organizations are competing, how the vendor community is competing. I mean, you see that with HP, with their capacity on demand. Yeah, that's a direct response to the public cloud. Absolutely. And so, and, and you're right, I think the big innovation of, of AWS is its business model, you know, in essence, and, and so, um, you know, again, will we see, th thinking about this way, look at the stack that Amazon is building. I mean, they're into semiconductors, they're into storage, they're into compute, they're into yep. database, they're into middleware, um, and, and you know, hundreds and hundreds of other services. Compare that to the HP approach, which is to partner now for the stack. You know, and, and that's what I really came away, uh, away with. Uh, as someone who is not as intimately involved with HPE as as, uh, as you have been and, and some of the other uh, Wikibon analysts have been, uh, this was all about partnering. And what HPE is doing is making a liability into an asset, right? They were late to the cloud, to the public cloud. They abandoned the public cloud and they got some criticism for that. But they have turned that liability into an asset by divesting themselves of anything that wasn't core to the infrastructure business and partnering like crazy. And it seems like uh, that, I mean, it's a strategy, it's a very interesting strategy, if they can pull it off, if they can be the best company to partner with, they can build an ecosystem that, that really could, can't be matched. Well, and, and again, you, uh, you know, we'd love to make comparisons. So you've, you've essentially got HPE lining up you know, against Dell. We'll see what happens with Lenovo. They need some time to sort of bake that strategy, but essentially those comf those companies are comfortable with lower margin businesses, right. reselling other people's technologies largely. You know, it used to be Intel and Microsoft, and now it's this broader ecosystem. Notwithstanding, EMC obviously owns a lot of its its own IP, so Dell now now owns that. But for instance, Dell uh, Dell EMC resells Nutanix. Right, that's right. a key part of its portfolio, and they're doing hundreds of millions of dollars of business there. And, and Dell is comfortable with that. Dell is a company that, when they were public, had 19% gross margins. EMC's got you know close to 60% gross margins before it went private. So you blend those together, and you're talking about 30% gross margin, maybe 33% gross margin, similar to where HPE is. It's an operating profit model that's much much lower. We're talking you know the the low teens. Amazon Web Services operating profit in, in their most recent quarter was around 33%. These are non-GAAP numbers, so think about the, the difference there. I mean, you're talking double the operating profit. And this is, a, and those are both infrastructure companies. So the big question I'm, I'm getting to is, will Amazon go up the stack further? You're seeing it eat away into database, and you know, you watch what Microsoft did over the years, and it kept going up and up and up and up the stack. You're seeing companies basically run their applications on AWS, notwithstanding there are many, many companies like, for instance, ServiceNow who own their own cloud, but many companies are choosing to run their applications inside of AWS. Will AWS go and sort of eat away at that part of the ecosystem. Why shouldn't they? I mean, if you're if you're AWS right now, you're you're king of the hill. And as Microsoft did in the '90s, when it was king of the hill, it it, it initiated a land grab. Right? Microsoft got into every market it could because it could afford to fail 
and uh, and it wouldn't impact the bottom line significantly. Hmm. So you, a, a, Amazon well, is uh, they move fast, they do a lot. But what do they do at, at every at every reinvent? It's shock and awe. Just the sheer number of new products and services they announce at the show is is always uh, you know, it's phenomenal. Well, the the why shouldn't they is because it's basically would be screwing their ecosystem. But you know their mantra is well we focus on the customers. So sort of coming back to HPE. What does HPE do? Does HPE make a big move between now and, and a year from now at, you know, when we're here, let's say next year at London Discover, will there be a big move? Will HP go out and try to make a big move? Yeah, I'm not sure what's out there. I mean, there were rumors about them acquiring Nutanix, there was other rumors about them acquiring SimpliVity. I don't think that would be game changing. You know, a move like Citrix might be game changing, but that's sort of a a shift back to the, to the, to the cloud path. It's hard past. to imagine what would right. be a game changer at this point. I mean, maybe a merger with Cisco? I, I, I don't know. The, these are, uh, uh, it's, it's hard to think of an acquisition that would really change the rules right now. There aren't that many affordable companies out there that, that are transformative. So, a couple of choices then, is to continue to do tuck-ins, which, which they absolutely will do and must do, and can do now because the balance sheet is substantially cleaned up, you know, and, or rather, um, make some kind of big move, like you said. You know, but, well, I think the, it was real that they were talking to EMC. I think there was no question yeah. about that. So, is there another move like that? You mentioned Cisco. There perhaps are. I mean, I'm throwing Citrix into the hat. Uh, I don't see those as necessarily game changing. Hard to think either. of Citrix as a game changer. And and uh, too much overlap with Cisco. Uh, uh, is, absolutely. You know, yeah, and, and yeah. so that doesn't make a lot of sense to me. And so, as a result, one could say, all right, well, certainly in the near term anyway, what HP will do is continue to do some tuck-ins. The interesting thing to me is going to be HP's, HPE's software strategy. HPE definitely uh, said, okay, look, the software portfolio that we've collected over the last decade is not working. You know, or we can't figure out how to make it work, so let's just sell it off, get some cash in there, keep our foot in the water in terms of having some ownership. But there's a lot of software companies uh, out there. Will th they start th over, th is what you're saying. Yes, and, and will they start tucking in some of those software companies to make their infrastructure run better, to enable the hybrid you know, cloud to be more simple? You know, that's, that, I think, is a very viable uh, approach. Um, not necessarily earth-shattering, but I think it's a viable approach and one that's steady as she goes, keep throwing off cash, and serve the customers yeah, through the channel. That's an excellent point, Dave. I mean, they have to be careful, as you said, of not uh, polluting their, their partner ecosystem, not competing with their partners, but there are certainly going to be areas of, of the software business where they do not have uh, a robust partner ecosystem, and those would be natural areas for them to uh, acquire into. Okay, we, uh, we're wrapping up the, uh, the opening. We got a wall-to-wall -wall coverage here all day long. We'll go, be going until uh, 6 p.m. local time, so keep it right there. This is theCUBE, uh, this is HPE, Discover 2016, live from London. We're right back. <laughs>